welcome to the Questionnaires podcast, where each week we source the best questions from Yahoo Answers and attempt to provide the best advice from... Why do they make concerts so loud you need to wear earplugs? To... How do we end phone conversations now that we don't have anywhere to go? We're here to prove that every question deserves an answer. Join with me this week, as always, is Marcus. Hello, Tom. And Damien. I've actually got to run right now, Tom. I'm flat out, so I can't do the I've podcast. So I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I've got on. so much going on. Sorry, man. <laughs> I find that that's a very interesting point about, like, what do you say when you've got to go because you're sort of just like, I better let you go. It's like, why? <laughs> why do you have to let me go? Yeah, no, I find my a lot of my conversations just ending with... Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I'll speak to you later. <laughs> anyway. And then it kind of just wraps this, up. I mean, it's it's what we're used to. Is, oh, I've got to go. There's plenty of reasons why you have to go. Like, like seriously, like if you're cooking, if you need to go to the <laughs> yeah. toilet, there's a bunch of different <laughs> of reasons that you can do inside that you got to go. You don't need to leave the house. You just, you know, got to do things. Can I vote that we make it acceptable to say, I want to go? <laughs> 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 That's anyway, the other thing. I, That's the other I thing. You just, gotta, you just got to want to go. That's it. I want you we to take just... this personally. I want to go. <laughs> yeah. I need to get out of here. It's I need not to stop me, this conversation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's just like one of those things that like after everything is said and done, we're probably never going to shake hands ever again. No. Like, yeah. We almost have to accept that no one's going to want to touch your, your filthy hands. Um, there was an interesting thing. Apparently that one in five Australians have said that after this is all said and done, they're going to keep up their extra hygiene uh, skills. They're going to actually keep doing that. But one in five, which is worrying to be one in five are just like, you know what? I might keep washing my hands. <laughs> Which is very damaging to think that that many people do not wash their hands. Yeah, that's I mean, worrying. Not- I also don't think that people, like everyone says, oh, I'm going to keep it up. I don't think they will. I think, you know, no. give it give it six months and everyone's going to be back to the way they were. Filthy it's as we water's going to be. Yeah, you know, we're all filthy animals at the end of the day. I've worked with people who used to pretend to wash their hands. They would do the quick tap flick on and then flick it off. It's like if you're wasting, the, case- if you're wasting the water, just put your goddamn hands under it. How hard is it to do that? <laughs> Or just don't turn it on at all. Don't, yeah. don't waste the illusion. Yeah. This whole situation has revealed the worst of human nature from stealing toilet paper to basically being like, what, we have to wash our hands properly now? Yeah. I don't know if this has happened to you guys. Do you find now that I'm, when I'm watching television shows and movies, when people are like overly, like overly touching each other, I'm like, oh, that wouldn't yeah. happen anymore. I keep thinking about that whenever I, I watch things. I do that all the time. I always look at a TV show and especially when I'm watching with, with my partner, I'm like, oh, look, like we're never doing that again. Or, oh, look at them. They're all embracing one another. Can't do that. Not in, <laughs> not in the coronavirus. No, no. I'm like, can, can you believe they touched the handrail on that staircase? <laughs> like, oh, what would how, you? How, how about all those discussions? Disgusting ones where they're like they're licking the hand right. You're like, oh my god, they're dead. They're totally dead right I know now. What movies like, you're watching? I mean, yeah, well, I, I, I was watching the the Top Gun volleyball scene the other night, and I was just in tears because I'm like, this is never going to happen again. They're all touching the ball, shirtless, <laughs> fluids yeah. abound, and that's never going to happen too, again. I was really sad about that. Too many fluids in that Top Top Gun uh, volleyball scene. <laughs> that's right. You know what? Um, are we all doing on. well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too, not too bad. I'm I'm actually getting a little bit stressed out. Not stressed out, mm. but like you know, mm. being at home i'm doing a lot of cooking and in this new house there's this i got this range hood that's too far out and i've bumped my head like five times it's an actual <laughs> it's in danger because of the coronavirus i'm cooking more and therefore i've got more head damage marcus is going to be the only person who's going to have like uh brain problems from so many concussions from kick from cooking because he's constantly <laughs> bashing his head on his range hood over and yeah, over really? like team sports have been cancelled but some somehow concussions have have gone up in marcus's life that's a physical yeah. sport for him cooking. I didn't, yeah, I didn't like cooking. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that, that's my that's my physical activity. I, I advise you just put on a bicycle helmet whenever you cook now, Marcus, to avoid I, repeated damage. I'm strongly, I'm strongly considering it. Trust me. Oh, well, that's all right. I mean, it's dangerous outside. It sounds like it's just as dangerous inside. So I don't know what to tell <laughs> you, Marcus. Is, it is. Uh, my life um, is full of danger. Let's jump into the show. What we do each and every week is answering questions from the website Yahoo Answers. Each of us try to find a question from the website and provide advice to these people to help them on their way. That's how the show works. The other thing we do each week is to name the question askers with a theme and this week it is marcus's theme yep it's uh my theme and uh no. This week, I thought to myself, I was listening to a bunch of uh, different covers. So for those who don't know what a cover is, I'm come pretty on. sure everyone does. But, <laughs> come on. But, come you, on. Know, you don't have to explain that to our audience. 
All right, all right. Music covers. M- music covers. Anyway, I've been listening to a Not bunch like of covers like must... duvets. Yeah, no, no, no duvets or dunas. Um, mm. Duna. Um, anyway, so I want to name the <laughs> question askers after covers that you feel did better than the original. Can I go okay, first? Okay. You can. Please. Uh, I'm going to say Heartbeats by Jose Gonzalez. Originally by The Knife, but I think his stripped back acoustic version is much better. Is much better. Ooh, I, you know okay, what? I right. agree with you. It is better. But the original is still pretty good. It is great. Mm. Um, all right. So this is going to come from Jose Gonzalez. Okay. And he Jose. writes in, am I wrong for keeping a lost pet until the owner has paid the advertised reward? This weekend, I saw a cat that looked like one I'd seen on lost posters around the neighborhood. They said there was a reward for $500 for finding the cat. So I caught the cat, which was pretty easy since he was pretty friendly. I let them know I found the cat confirmed there was a reward and texted the guy a picture of the cat and gave him my address. This is where the problem started. When he got to my house, I asked for the money before returning the cat. He said that there actually isn't a reward and that he only advertised one to increase the chance that people would look for his cat. I told him that I wasn't going to give his cat back until he paid and that he shouldn't have posted (laughs) a reward if he wasn't going to pay for it. He then threatened to call the cops. I said that he was welcome to and that I would be happy to get things on record in case I had to take him to small claims court. He left begrudging and the cat is still currently in my possession. His name is Babushka and he's pretty chill, so I don't mind keeping him around for the foreseeable future, Jose Gonzalez. Well, that's that's impressive. I like the name of the cat, Babushka. That's, it's a great that's cat one name, my, isn't it? That, that's, a, that's a personal fact. I might, I might actually take that if nice. I get a cat or a dog. Yeah, why not? Babushka. So I wanted to ask you guys, how much weight do you think a reward on a poster is? I mean, obviously, this is not Wild West time, so it's not like there's a bounty yeah. out on people's heads, but when it comes to pets um i feel like it's interesting like that's that that's why the person had put the uh reward up is because they just think that people are looking through the going through the classifieds being like okay what what am i going to do today oh hang on what's the bounty on this cat i'm gonna go find it and (laughs) i don't think anyone looks looks for pets based on like if you had stopped at the traffic lights and you see a a, um lost kitty reward poster on the on the pole you're not going to look at it and go all right, cool. Well, that's what I'm going to spend my Saturday afternoon doing is looking for this tabby um, to try and get that reward. You're not going to be on Pussy Patrol, all right? You're not going to be going around (laughs) looking for the cats. You you don't need to be going around looking for like this reward. However, do you feel like if you saw that cat, like, oh, there's just a random cat there, but then you're like, wait, that looks similar. If you saw a poster, whether it's with a reward or not, do you think you'll try and catch it? Or do you think that a reward's the incentive? Mm, I think this guy, from the way this guy has written the question, I think there is no chance he looks for this cat if there if there wasn't a reward. So at the end of the day, I, I you have think, to go to the effort of catching yeah. the, the the animal. It could bite you, it could scratch you, and then you have to keep it at your house for for who knows how long. Yeah, um, yeah. I think I think I I think whether he wouldn't have looked for it regardless, but I think it's the catching part. If the reward wasn't there, he'd probably be like, eh, I'll leave it. I, I don't really care that much to catch it. But five hundred dollars, I'll catch a cat for five hundred dollars. I've got to say though, it's pretty conniving of that person to put the reward on and say, oh, I just thought people would you know there'd be more incentive for people to return it or to bring the cat back which yeah. is like that's false advertising yeah. right yeah. Like, you know people like Damien said before it's like if people sc- if you scan an item and at a retail store and it doesn't come up it's like people are so quick to be like oh false advertising it said this so I have to pay this much or you know it was on a rack that said under $12 but it scans as 50 everyone's just like well that's false advertising they're so quick to like st- say that as yeah. if it is like law of like the human race that's 100% <laughs> I think people feel entitled to like whatever benefit they can get even if if it, if it mm. hardly justifies like them getting it in the first place. I, I've actually lost a pet before and we put posters right. out. No reward, um, just no. that he was missing. We put him everywhere and we eventually got a call from somebody, but they saw the posters mm. after they'd found my dog. So they had already oh. given him to the pound and said like, we found him a couple of da- like a, one or two days ago and we, we've sent him mm. to the pound now. And I like, I offered them a reward and said, I'm so like, thank you very much, blah, blah, blah. And they said, no, no, it's all good. We're just happy to help. Hope you find him okay um the worst part was we people they're not just nice people we rang the pound and we said to them uh has this dog been you know handed in he he, he was wearing a jumper with skulls on it at the time this little my little pomeranian (laughs) (laughs) so like he's like he's a he's a tiny pomeranian in 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 like in a skull onesie pretty much It's, I mean, I feel like yeah. that's pretty recognizable. And they said, no, nah, we haven't we haven't had anyone, any dogs like that. And I thought, I'll go in just in case. I went in and he was literally the last dog in the like the final cage. So I went throughout the whole just pound the whole and then pound. found him right at the end. And he was there hanging out in his skull jumper. So I don't, they have people yeah. 
at that pound have to get their eyes checked because he was there and I took Maybe him home and I was very happy. In the defense of the pound, which I don't really care that much for the pound, but in defense of the pound, they're probably like, there's probably like five staff on there. One staff probably put him at the end. And the other staff True. was just like, I'm not going through the whole pound. No, we haven't seen him. That's pretty recognizable. I would see it. That's my guess is what happened. But you're, you're probably right. right. If, so your dog was given to the pound. Yes. Did you have to then like it? So it's been impounded basically. Mm-hmm. Is there like a release cost from that? Uh, well, there, there wouldn't have been. But mm-hmm. when... Uh... They, they were like, look, he's, he's got a sweet jumper. Clearly you guys can afford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, you can afford have, like, the release there's fee. There's your dog there. You know how they impound your car? They put like a, like a, a yellow a sort of... On tire boot. Yeah. Yeah. Was he clamped on his leg? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Probably he couldn't get away. They, they, they clamped, yellow they clamped his, on his legs. He, yeah, they clamped his left leg with a 10 kilo bar and he couldn't walk anywhere because he's a he was a four kilo Pomeranian. No, Poor what actually happened guy. to us was we were we were uh breaking the law a bit. At this point, my dog was like 13, 14 years old. So he didn't get very far because he was like a geriatric basically. <laughs> But we hadn't yeah, registered true. him and he hadn't been microchipped because oh. we were super mm. lax about it back in the day. So we got fined. He was off the grid. He was off the grid. So we got fined and we had to pay for all the registration and stuff. And at the time I was at uni, so I just wrote in like, I can't afford all this because it was my dog. I can't yeah. afford all this stuff. So yeah. they cut the fee back a bit, which was nice of them. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we had to pay for that. Other other than that, there was just like some paperwork we had to file and stuff. So maybe that's the incentive by putting a reward on your lost animal to be like, I want you to get this money. It's like better than the money going to the pound which yeah. people are just like hey maybe you can take this money instead so that sort of makes sense in my mind of why it exists true but i think the pound needs it more than this guy here who's basically he's kind of taking the, mm. the animal hostage i would say he's it's, yeah, all, it's, it's a hostage yeah. situation it's a hostage As someone situation. who's lost he's- a pet like i was completely well i think you were there marcus that night when i went missing i don't know if you remember yeah. this yeah, we, we were having pre-drinks at my house for my brother's party and then i went to go in the backyard for a second and realized my dog was missing so because my dad used to keep the garage open a lot while he was doing gardening so like the dog just happened to wander out and he didn't realize he was gone so instead of going to the party i was like stuff you guys i'm going looking for my dog so i was like half drunk just like running around my streets at like 11 (laughs) o'clock at night looking for my dog (laughs) (laughs) exactly i I Um, remember i remember when this happened yeah can can i assume that the dog was wearing this outfit for the party as well this jumper was because (laughs) the people he was having company and he wanted to look good i mean yeah i'm Uncle Toby, his name was Toby. He was always, yeah. he, he loved to dress well. He loved to look dapper. Yeah. And when there was a big event, he was pulling out the skull jumper. You knew it was going to happen. <laughs> did, he, did he have any other like jumpers with like bow ties or anything like that? Uh, he did have like a, a little tuxedo outfit, a formal, little number a he used to throw on. Yeah, he, he, But he, he had a certain type of dog he was appealing to. He wanted to appeal to the metal chick. Like yeah. that's, yes. the ones that, that the really Mohawk. liked um, that. That was his type. So he had to appeal yeah. to them. Mark. Well, yeah. I, I raised him listening to Slipknot. So. You know, he was raised as a, <laughs> as a metal pup and, 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 and it stayed, it stuck with him. So let's go back to the Hans Gruber of Pussycats, all right? What yes. should <laughs> what should he do? I, I feel like, fair enough, he's been supporting this cat, feeding it. Like, I mean, water's free, but like food and all that. <laughs> so there, there is some sort of money that he's got to be compensated for, sure. <laughs> And he he does have a he does have a case when it comes to small claims court because oh, I spoke I actually spoke to a lawyer friend of mine and when I say oh. that I met, I went to freelegaladvice.com dot com and <laughs> it says here that like if you essentially put out a reward with no loopholes stated on there that will get you out of paying it like you're legally yeah. obligated. Obviously, the cops aren't going to arrest you, but they could take you to court in re- to get that reward offer. So there is like he could take him there if he really wanted to. If you were to take, if this person was to take you to the police and say that he's not giving my cat back, do you think the police would even? I feel like the police would be very irritated by this. Firstly, yeah, and I feel like they would take the side of of the person whose cat it is. They'd be like, just give him the fucking cat back. We've got criminals to stop. I feel like <laughs> even though it's well within within your right, the cops would take the side of the dog of the owner of the cat. Sure. Unless I, they're dog people and be like, fuck that yeah, cat. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, feel like- I, I feel like, but this is also. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Seven Psychopaths where they steal dogs of wealthy people, wait for the reward to come up, and then claim the reward when they give the dog back. So, so yeah, this would hurt their business model if someone does, did that. Yeah. For a movie called Seven Psychopaths, that's a pretty tame crime, I would say. It's not very... I wouldn't say they consist <laughs> of psychopath behavior. <laughs> yeah, look, look. It, it's a great movie. You should watch it on Netflix. Um, it's an ironic title is what it, it is. It is an ironic um, It's actually really it, good, it, yeah. It's also probably... It's pretty ridiculous to take somebody to court over this, I think is... 
is. Yeah. Yeah. Probably oh, this, the, the dumb thing. A lot of, it's small claims court. There's a lot of stupid shit that goes to small claims where you don't need a lawyer either. You can just go to court and defend yourself. Here's like, an idea. Is yeah. Judge Judy is small claims court, right? Yep. I think so. Could you take it this case like to Judge Judith the Shineland? <laughs> Shineland. I, I think, <laughs> we could I take think, it to Judith. I think Judith is the way to go for this for bad boy. Uh, somebody at work got me onto a great game that you can play 